guys, Anna is here and in this video we're going to go through a process of splicing and everything you need to know about it for your A-level. So please grab a piece of paper so you can draw along with me and without further ado, let's just get into it. Splicing is a process of RNA modification of where the pre-mRNA is going to be made into a mature mRNA which is ready to be translated. So let's just jump into it and go through the details. I want you to draw a line a single line which will represent DNA and I want you to separate it roughly into five sections. And what we're going to do guys, we're going to call each one of those sections. Uh, so we're going to introduce two terms, exon and intron. So I want you to label it exon 1, intron 1, exon 2, intron 2 and exon 3. And basically the idea guys is that DNA is made out of exons and introns and exon is a coding section of DNA, so the sections that will code for proteins and any functional RNA, okay? And then intron is non-coding section of DNA, so something that is not part of the gene. So a gene could be divided over several exons, this is just kind of a rough example, it could be different numbers, but just know that exons are coding and introns are non-coding sections of the DNA. And when transcription occurs, so let's just kind of label it in a different color, so when transcription occurs, we actually initially produce a pre-mRNA. So pre-mRNA contains exons and introns. And if introns are non-coding sections of DNA, well, there is no point cell keeping those. So the purpose of splicing is then to cut those out. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw now an extra line, but we're actually going to just leave exons in and we're going to cut out the introns. So the process of splicing includes cutting out the introns and then joining exons together. And now, guys, we've produced mature mRNA in this case, which is then ready to be uh, transported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and to be translated. So, just a little definition for you there as well. It's important to remember that uh, prokaryotic DNA does not contain introns, so therefore splicing is only relevant for eukaryotic cells. So just make sure to remember that as well. So let's now go through a summary of all these processes and where they happen in a cell. So what I want you to draw now, guys, is a big cell with a nucleus inside. So it's going to be a eukaryotic cell. And so let's just label it a cell and a nucleus. Okay, so after that, basically, we're going to focus on all different processes and where they happen within a cell. So as a reminder, transcription happens in the nucleus, which will then produce pre-mRNA. And then after that, splicing also occurs in the nucleus, which will result in the production of mature mRNA without introns. Then mRNA will be exported via the nuclear pore of the nucleus, so it's the gap within a nuclear membrane that basically will then allow the transport of mRNA out of the nucleus, which will then go into the cytoplasm specifically to the ribosome, and this is where the translation will occur. So we'll just draw mRNA between the two subunits of the ribosome, and here we go, guys. This is the summary of all the processes and we'll cover translation in the next video. Now I want you to introduce a new concept called alternative splicing. So if you guys are doing AQA, this is perfect for you because this is something you can include in your essays and this is usually used as an extension material. But for everybody else, guys, Keep watching it, it's always good to learn extra things in biology. So alternative splicing is a subtype of splicing. So as you can see here, we're just going to focus already on the mature mRNA once we already cut the introns out. So we're left with exon 1, 2 and 3. So in only some cells uh, and for some proteins, okay, a cell might decide to actually choose specific exons. So in this case, it might go for exon 1 and 2 or exon 2 and 3, or exon 1 and 3. Remember, guys, that a cell will have many more exons. This is just kind of a very brief example, okay? So what's the purpose of that? Well, 
If a cell can choose which exons to keep, it will allow a cell to produce different isoforms of proteins. So basically, an isoform of a protein means it's the same protein, however, which will have slightly different structure. So for example, it might be have a slightly different optimum pH, or it might function at slightly different optimum temperature, and things like that. So it gives a little bit of a variety for a cell to produce a certain protein. Right guys, and this is a summary of everything you need to know for splicing uh, process for A-level biology. Please press the thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe, and please do let me know in the comments below of what other topics you want me to cover, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.